Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Trinidad and Tobago's Attorney General has a mandate to make the CCJ Trinidad and Tobago's final appeal court. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday, 27th May, 2022. Details when we return. Hubbard's Motor Department, Mount Gay, and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's Quality Service of Affordable prices. Welcome back. The Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago says he has been given the unequivocal support of the Prime Minister to complete Trinidad and Tobago's journey to have the Caribbean Court of Justice replace the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council as its final appellate court for criminal and civil matters. He was responding to a motion raised by an independent senator in the Senate on Wednesday. However, the opposition is showing no signs of supporting such a move. TV6's Jewel Brown reports. In terms of access to justice, the CCJ beats the Privy Council hands down. Besides being closer and cheaper, the CCJ's structure and approach makes it a far more inclusive court than the Privy Council. Independent Senator Anthony Vieira, as he began the Senate's debate of his private member's motion in which he is calling on the upper house to agree that the CCJ, the Caribbean Court of Justice, be recognized as the final court of appeal for Trinidad and Tobago. The CCJ is based in Port of Spain, but the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, which is based in London in the United Kingdom, continues to be Trinidad and Tobago's final court of appeal for civil and criminal matters, otherwise known as appellate jurisdiction. While they have not complained officially, and in typical understatement, some law lords have expressed surprise about our unwillingness and reluctance to cut the colonial umbilical cord. Attorney General Reginald Amour, a senior counsel, was the first government senator to respond to Senator Vieira's motion. I pay tribute to Anthony Vera, independent senator, and applaud his very timely motion brought before this August chamber, the Senate of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. According to its website, the CCJ is the final court of appeal for CARICOM member states for trade disputes under the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. However, it serves as the final court of appeal for criminal and civil matters only for four CARICOM member states, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, and Guyana. Permit me the opportunity, Madam Speaker, Madam President, to affirm today that within the first week of my assumption of office as Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley gave me his unequivocal support for making a main plank of my tenure in office the completion of this country's journey to fulfill its treaty obligations of acceding to the Caribbean Court of Justice as our final court of appeal to replace the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. The AG said that there ought not to be any lack of confidence with regard to the independence of the CCJ. Senator Vieira said the CCJ is totally independent of political interference. The CCJ was first established via an agreement signed by CARICOM heads of government in 2001, including Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister at that time, Bas Diopande, who led the then UNC administration, which did not sign on to the CCJ replacing the Privy Council as Trinidad and Tobago's final court of appeal. The position of the UNC, the present opposition party, was first presented during the debate of Senator Vieira's motion by leader of opposition business, Wade Mark. How can the people of the Caribbean have confidence in politicians having the right to remove the president of the Caribbean Court of Justice? How? That's a mockery of our democracy. And you are telling us in Trinidad and Tobago, Madam President, 
that we must support the Caribbean Court of Justice? When the political influence and political interference is enshrined in an agreement Senator Vieira's motion calls for the appropriate amendments to be made to alter the Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago so as to entrench the court, the CCJ, as Trinidad and Tobago's final court of appeal. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. In the meantime, the Trinidad and Tobago government has announced that the lifting of more COVID-19 restrictions to include the doing away with the TT travel pass from June 1st. As of Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, I am authorized by the Honorable Prime Minister uh, to tell the, the country, especially those who travel, that the TT Travel Pass system will be discontinued as of next Wednesday, 2022. Health Minister Terence Dial Singh shared the details of the latest lifting of COVID-19 restrictions during the Health Ministry's weekly COVID-19 update on Wednesday. He explained that while persons are no longer required to provide proof of vaccination status, documentation of a person's COVID-19 status remains. Unvaxxed nationals and non-nationals can enter Trinidad and Tobago so you don't have to prove your vaccination status. However, you do have to provide either, either a negative PCR or antigen test 48 hours prior to entry. The TT Travel Pass was implemented by the Trinidad and Tobago government in July 2021 as a means of screening the COVID-19 status to those scheduled to enter the country. Personal information, including flight details and COVID-19 antigen test results, were to be uploaded prior to boarding as a means of preventing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. <music> You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Over in Antigua, Sir Isaac Vivian Alexander Richards has spoken exclusively to ABS News on the heels of the announcement that he is to receive CARICOM's highest honor, the Order of the Caribbean Community, OCC. Being a representative of the region in itself, you know, uh, with the... the by itself, it's not just for, 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 for me as the I and I sort of a thing, but all the folks you know that would have been in the trenches with you. Um, I share this stuff with, with all these individuals. The Foreign Press Association of Africa has blasted media organizations for continuing to use images of black people in stories about the outbreak of monkeypox in Europe and North America. The association has registered its displeasure against such media outlets, arguing that their continued use of images bearing persons with dark or black skin and African skin shows prejudice. In a statement Monday, the association noted that the World Health Organization has described monkeypox as a zoonotic disease caused by the monkeypox virus, a member of the orthopox virus. As any other disease, it can occur in any region in the world and afflict anyone regardless of race or ethnicity. As such, we believe that no race or skin complexion should be the face of this disease, it stated. If you are saying that there is an outbreak of uh, monkeypox in the North America as well as the Europe, then show us the pictures of, of, of patients who are, are affected by that particular disease in that particular area. You cannot be talking of uh, monkeypox in, in the Europe then you are showing pictures of the of Democratic Republic of Congo. That doesn't make sense. The association said it finds it disturbing for European and North American media outlets to use stock images bearing people with dark or black and African skin complexion to depict an outbreak of the disease in the United Kingdom and North America. The association suggested that images from hospitals across Europe or the Americas can be used or in the absence of such, use a collection of electron micrographs with labeled subcellular structures. The Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry President Anthony Branca urges the private sector in that country to do more to rebuild Barbados. This Barbados Today news item goes in-depth. One of the island's business leaders today warned that urgent action is needed 
to correct some of the social development issues facing the country. President of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Anthony Banker, issued an impassioned call for business leaders to join forces with government to provide support in several areas, including finding ways to shield residents from rising inflation. He suggested that failure to act could have their consequences. The time has come where our business strategy in this small society can no longer be driven primarily by profit. We need to develop or, develop or support programs where none of our children are hungry at school. We need to ensure that genuine cases of need can get sustainable help. We need to work with government to ensure that a basket of basic food items is affordable to all. We need to commit public-private sector partnerships in the provision of social support. Let me read that again. We need to commit to public-private sector partnerships in the provision of social support. We need to support entrepreneurship development in a meaningful way. We need to create job training opportunities to get our at-risk youth off the block. We need to form strategic partnerships with nonprofit organizations who are delivering impactful programs in our communities. Branker also raised questions whether the timing is right as calls mount for pay increases across the public and private sector. Continuing its fight back from the 14% loss of GDP, the government is now faced with the challenge of adjusting public sector wages and salaries. No doubt labor representatives for both the public and private sectors feel justified in their appeals for salary adjustments based upon the current inflation rates. But does this truly address the crisis we face? I suggest we must now exhibit a level of collaboration for sustainability we have never envisioned. It will require temporary systematic change and this level of change requires collaboration among all stakeholders. The Caribbean's foremost leader, Barbadian Prime Minister Mia Motley, urged Barbadians to continue to keep up to date with their COVID-19 vaccination. This after she received her third shot on Wednesday. The Prime Minister also implored citizens to take better care of themselves and to practice healthy habits. She made the comments shortly after getting her blood pressure taken and the booster shot administered as part of a collaborative effort between the University of the West Indies and the Heart and Stroke Foundation this afternoon at Ilara Court. The island's lone infectious disease specialist, the Most Honorable Dr. Corey Ford, also received his booster shot. I really would like you, Bajans, to take your measurements. One, blood pressure, because a stitch in time is worth Nine. Nine. Yes. Okay. Prevention is better than, than cure. cure. Mm -hmm. We know all these things, but we need to walk the walk. And secondly, as it relates to the vaccines, if you don't have, get vaccinated. And if you have, get boosted if you need boosted. And, and we can manage these things as we go forward if everybody or as many people do what they must do to take care of themselves. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, now, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery mat. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets.
I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.